Uh, hi everyone, this is uh, Keith from Investment Modes again. Um, by the time you view this video, I think it's on uh, National Day uh, of Singapore 2023. So a uh, very early uh, Happy National Day to all Singaporeans. Uh, today's video is about, I call it uh, a good Singapore financial independence planning blueprint. And uh, we've done two, two videos uh, up, up to now, uh, two very long videos. So I thought uh, let's put those two videos uh, into good use to come up with a good application so that uh, you can see how uh, they add up together to, uh, to, to help you reach a financial goal that maybe some of you are looking for. I think a lot of people are planning for retirement. So for those people that is planning for their retirement or per planning for their early financial independence, you might find this video kind of useful. Okay, so let's get down to it. Uh, so again, uh, I made two videos uh, up to this point, two long videos. Uh, some people say cannot watch uh, because it is so long. Uh, they are long for reasons because I think they are evergreen content. The first video is uh, titled uh, Crafting an Ideal Passive Investment Portfolio for Your Financial Goals. And it goes through uh, some of uh, uh, what I think what, what I think is uh, quite a good uh, default uh, financial accumulation and deaccumulation setup that uh, Singaporean can have uh, when, when, when they think about, okay, how am I going to accumulate money for some intermediate and long-term financial goals? It is passive uh, and I think it's a scalable solution, a lot of solutions. You're not sure whether you have enough capital. And I also go go through uh, some equity and uh, and 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 bond bond returns, so that you have can have a certain i you can have a certain i idea how uh, some of these uh, equity uh, bond bond returns is. I also talk about certain strength strength and weakness of of the plan. Uh, particularly, I think I I I try to highlight uh, a lot of things that people fear about investments and how actually these portfolios are able to actually alleviate it. Now the second video is uh, trying to unpack this uh, safe withdrawal rate uh, safe withdrawal rate uh, system that uh, that was created by uh, Mr. William Bangan. So it's on the 4% rule but I try to flush it out uh, flash it out in, in, in such a way that allows you to see uh, what is it and how it works, how it solves a certain uh, very challenging financial planning uh, pro pro problem and in a certain way we can actually implement uh, this as a drawdown method but more or less it allows you to see um, some light at the end of the tunnel how spending down can be so we will marry these two together right uh, and and what what we're gonna do is that we're gonna take we, we're gonna use this person called Karen's right Karen has a certain financial independence goal and we want to see how these two will add up uh, in in a in in kind of a uh, financial independence plan so for those who are interested uh, in this financial goal right you can try to see yourself as a karen and karen is quite young but uh, for you people who are in different uh, phase of life and different kind of capital uh, in my subsequent video, we, we might talk about some of these adjustments. Uh, but this is more catered for someone that is like kind of young. For some reasons, they want to do all uh, the responsible things to save up for their retirement. So how to go about uh, look, looking at this? So um, in a certain sense, I probably didn't change, change the title title for this slide uh, basically is you can imagine that Karen wants an income stream during uh, during her FI so how does FI looks like imagine that uh, the idea is at the start of your FI you have managed to accumulate a pot of money and and the question is how much do you need and a, a lot of this is also determined by uh, the spending over time what you want is uh, to be able to spend over time 
um, so that you don't run out of money. So you can imagine this dot, right? Uh, some people expect it to be closer to, they want it to be optimized. They want it closer to zero, but not zero. So, and, and usually you want it to last for, for, for a period. Now, give me a second. Uh, let me see whether I can change to laser pointer. Although at a certain point, I think uh, I might need to change it back to, uh, I might need to change it. Uh, I, I, I might need to retoggle again. Okay. So we have a case study over here of Karen. Karen is 25 years old. Um, why I choose a lady, I have no no idea. And usually a lady graduates from university at 23 years old, not 25, but never mind. Let's just use 25 because 25 is a nice number. Just started work not too long ago and would like to do a sensible thing and save for her financial independence. Okay, this is wrong. Huh? Uh, no, she doesn't have an idea when, uh, and of course, like a lot of us, we do not know when. So, a good, a good um, milestone would be 65 years old because that's roughly the traditional uh, retirement, uh, retirement age. Okay. So this would be Karen's uh, theoretical FI path. Okay. It looks something like this. And this is something that you can frame in, in, inside your head. We talk about this portion that is like... Uh, your question will be like, what's the magic number that you need to accumulate over here so that you have enough money to actually spend during this, this phase? So this phase of things, we call this uh, Karen's uh, phase of deaccumulation. Or I think it's easier to understand if I say it's uh, Karen's uh, spend, spending down period, uh, spend down till before she passed away. But before that, we need to actually accumulate this amount of money. So... There's a lot of questions. In the previous one, we talk about uh, it's like what's the magic number, how much that I can spend so that uh, I won't run out of money. And then now over here, there's even more questions. Uh, how much should I actually put in? So these are something that we, we try to see whether we can tackle today. Okay. Now, the second video that I did, right, the 4% rule, right, it is sort of like show, show a certain idea how the deaccumulation can be because how much you should save for is largely depends on the system that you are that you have over here for deaccumulation some of you you might not share the same uh, philosophy as i do you might you you might you might be more of a property uh, buy and let which is uh, buying a property and then renting out uh, that's your plan about spending down. Some would prefer only spending the dividends in a dividend strategy or read strategy, or you might see it as a mixture of two. Okay. Now, depending on uh, your choice about what's your strategy of spending down, right? Either these that I mentioned or another weird system that you have, right? It will affect this magic number over here. Okay. So, um, for those people who um, who are not uh, so aware of like what is this, uh, I call this the safe withdrawal method. I think a lot of people call it a safe withdrawal method. You can go back to the video. We're gonna link these two videos that I did previously in 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 the notes for this video. Okay, so um, in order for us to actually find find this out, right? Um, we are we have to take a look at this portion first. Uh, we take a, tackle this portion, then we tackle this 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 portion. So that so you can can have a certain sequence I, idea about how these planning sequence uh, would would uh, take place. Okay, let's deduce this first. Okay, so the first thing to actually find out is that like, what is Karen spending in like in FI? Basically, it's like this spending lah. We're talking about this 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 spending over here, and I think uh. This is important because it drives everything. Uh, a lot of people just use their current spending. Like uh, today, um, let's say you're 31 years old, you earn like $5,000, but you spend like about $2,000. So that would be uh, the amount that, you, that you, you anchor inside your head. And then that's what you actually plan for because 
you hope that if you have passive income today, about 2000 a month, right? Then you don't have to work anymore. Lah. Okay. That's not bad. Not a bad idea. But uh, the question is whether your current lifestyle is your F- FI vi- lifestyle. Does this two lifestyle, is, is this two lifestyle similar? And in, in a certain sense, some, some of y'all, when you all started this idea, right, you all have a family or two. And the question to ask yourself is, now you seem to spend more, but when you retire, is your lifestyle still the same? That lifestyle drives your expenses and expenses drives your income requirement. Okay. A lot of people also tries to be more conservative and they give their current lifestyle plus buffers. Also can. Okay. But you need to know about this. Okay. The greater your FI lifestyle, right, which means that the more abundant your life, lifestyle is, the more capital you need and the longer you need to work. This is quite straightforward. Or you have a rich daddy and then you can, in some place, in a certain point, an inheritance come and then money lands on your lap. Okay? If you are not so, so lucky, right? Remember this, how these two things add up together. So um, my recommendation is, you spend spend your life understanding the lifestyle you desire. You have a enough period, like you probably need a certain period to actually accumulate this amount of money. So concurrently at the same time, try to find out like the spending line items for the lifestyle that you envision in F5. Okay. Think about how much you need or can be flexible with them. Okay. Uh find out how much they cost today today. Uh, your desired lifestyle may change in the future and so does this number. This is quite normal, okay? Uh, it, it may sound uncertain to you, but this is how life is, okay? Tracking your spending for a year helps. Some people really, they don't have an idea about their spending. We have advisors telling us that it's like, it's like, we ask, we, we send a fact finding, they fill up this thing and then a lot of times we ask them, hey, hey, this is like, you, re- you, you give this idea, this is the amount that you save. And a lot of times they, they find that there's a disconnect or that they were quite shocked about some of the numbers. Uh, not, so, so the more conscious you are of this, right, uh, the easier that you, your, 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 your plan can be, your, the, your plan can be actually like more, op- more optimized. Okay? So, um, this is, I share this in one of my blog posts, like, uh, this is not all I spend. A lot of people mistake, mistake that this is my most essential expenses. So you can see like, what's the line item and then what's the yearly cost. And then it comes up to be $837 and 10,000 a year. Okay. But you also see that like, I can put a kind of details inside that. You ask me, Keith, why, why you? First whole focus on refrigerator, laptop, mobile replacement. What about the rest of the things? Okay. Uh and why 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 can you list out these things like that? It's because like I live a certain life, right? For I think I, I think we live a life for maybe twenty years or so. We kind of understand some of these things. It's just that we're kind of unconscious about about some of these things. And the more unconscious you are, the more you buffer. Or you come out with a figure that is like kind of less re- 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 realistic. Before you can even buffer, right? It's important to actually like have a certain idea like this is the realistic kind of line, I- line items today. So to me, this is a realistic kind of line items. And I did make changes along the way. This is natural thing. And some of my figures, my FI figures and all, they will change a- 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 accordingly. So so you can come up with, let's say, okay, like I, I, I say, I don't know my number. Like, I just need $5,000. Okay, lor. but I hope that like, there is that uncertainty there. Lah. Like when you, let's say you reach closer, closer to it, hey, 5000 is it enough or not? You have that question mark. Now, at least I do this one. I know that, okay, what else I haven't factored in? At least I know the what else I haven't factored in. So clarity gives you like more control. Okay, so we can, have a certain example over here that, okay, let's say Karen is 25 years old, right? He, 
she figure out that these are the line items that she needs. Okay, each of these is like that. You can take a look at six meals today. Six six dollar a meal. That's like about ninety meals. Ah, so one month, one month got ninety meals. Ah, three meals, three times thirty ninety. Okay, then some of these things are. I think if I I won't spend so much time into it. You can pause this video. Take take a look at. You can agree or disagree with me. Like like let's let's just take it that it's two thousand three hundred a month and it's twenty seven thousand six 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 hundred uh uh a year. So this is what it costs today two zero two three. Okay. So the question is today it costs two zero two thousand three hundred a month. Okay. Question: How do you find out like? If let's say you're planning the milestone is sixty five years old, right? That's when you officially retire, right? How much is two two thousand three three hundred uh in forty years time? Because this is forty years, we can have a kind of like a standard or or con conservative uh inflation assumption three 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 percent a year, right? The formula is something like that. You take this two thousand three hundred, right? Then you sum one point zero three three is the three percent, ah, okay. Roughly, it's like hundred and three percent now. Okay, one hundred three to the power of forty years because you're accumulating for forty years. Okay, remember this formula. So, if you put this formula inside your a calculator, you come out with seven thousand five hundred uh dollars or ninety thousand a year. So, in twenty years time, the equivalent purchasing power for these line items, right, is seven thousand five hundred. Okay, seven thousand five hundred. Will be able to buy you these line items. Probably it's not this amount, but you know, it's in a future amount. Okay, so you figure out okay, like how much it is. Okay, so how much capital does Karen needs at sixty four and sixty five years old? So we we sort of like have a certain idea. We want an inflation adjusted income of about seven thousand five hundred a month like this. Now we need to figure out how much it is this. Okay. The way we figure out is to use that safe withdrawal rate table. Now remember that that uh, there's a certain kind of uh, philosophy or idea behind how you spend down uh, with the safe withdrawal rate. Safe the safe withdrawal rate is like you you withdraw an initial amount of seven thousand five hundred dollars, and for subsequent years you adjust for the prevailing inflation. So if inflation is three percent for the previous year. You adjust for it. If inflation the next year, let's say this year the inflation is twelve percent, then the next year you 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 adjust the 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 income twelve percent. So you kind of get a a a a real income over here. Now, Karen plans to probably like this is also you also don't know like when when Karen will pass away. And of course, we can look up a longevity table to get a better definition. Sometimes these kind of things is a comfort level. And we can assume that actually, like Karen plans to, let's say she lasts to until hundred years old. Okay, if let's say she passed away early, maybe the the amount of money will actually pass to her 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 heirs, the 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 people that will benefit from it. So Karen's the the period is like about thirty five years. So this is the table, the safe withdrawal rate table that I came up came came up with with thirty five years will fall somewhere between over here. And a a good initial safe withdrawal rate to actually use is like about two two point eight percent. So we so we can actually apply this two point eight percent thirty five years uh and this seven thousand five hundred to figure out what's the capital over here. Okay, so uh Karen's capital requirement at sixty five years old right is the annual income requirement divided by safe withdrawal rate. So you take seven thousand five hundred over here ah uh, the first year ah. Uh, Seven thousand five hundred times twelve divided by two point eight percent, you get three point two million dollars. Okay, that sounds like a large amount of money, lah. But but it's also that uh because of this time period, there's a lot of uh there's a lot of. Karen can be lucky or unlucky. Uh, inflation can be very high or very low. So, uh, this plan buffers is kind of conservative, like it buffers for those periods like high inflation. Uh, where you're spending a lot, but uh, the the markets might not be doing as well as 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 it should. 
Okay, so now we figure out this 3.2 million already. Okay, so how does Karen accumulate this 3.2 million in 40 years? So, um, so right now, if you look at the picture, you have 3.2 million. Now we have to actually settle this portion of things. Okay, so through the first video, right, the first video we have, right, we have a certain idea about like how to cut craft uh, passive portfolios right with equities diversified uh, equities and bonds ETF so you can have um, different allocation of equity and bonds so imagine this one these are taken from I think these are usage ETFs that is listed on a London Stock Exchange that you can actually purchase using uh, a, a broker that gives you access over there like interactive brokers poems DBS Vickers Standard, Char Standard Chartered Bank and Sexo, okay? And and this is a 100% equity portfolio. You can look at the expense ratio, the trading cost. We're using interactive brokers because uh, it shows how low cost it, it can be. And this is a more a bond-heavy portfolio and an even more bond-heavy portfolio, okay? So you can actually implement these portfolios. But the question right now is that which portfolios or 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 are more suitable for Karen, okay? Now, in that first video, the crafting one, right? I listed out um a lot of uh, features, but also some 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 advantages over here. And this is a good summary slide of uh, like 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 what we like about it. Some economic drivers and empirical evidence. We kind of have a. It gives you a certain idea with enough um, history, right? You can have an, an an idea that, yeah, the returns is gonna be a range, lah. Okay, is the return is gonna be range? It can be twenty year return can be three point two percent, but it can also be fourteen fourteen percent. So you have a certain idea, and in a certain way, it's also what I consider like self rejuvenating, lah. Uh, self rejuvenating means that like you're not kind of like afraid that okay if let's say a certain sector or certain uh, uh, company collapse right uh, that that you will lose out it's it's a little bit of like survival of the fittest or in certain sense if you're using factor funds there is the rebalancing itself uh, gives gives it the ability to actually harvest uh, different kind of risk premiums about it so diversified has a way of actually capturing returns but it's also prevent certain things that you most fear okay and of course uh, it's scalable and and e easy to actually implement okay so um long-term returns for so over here like i I shown this slides right and in a certain in a certain sense right if we have different allocations of equity and bonds uh, and this, these are 20 years annualized return rate. You can see that um, there's a range of it. Returns is gonna, always going to be a range, even if we're talking about 20 years. Uh, there is a saying that if, let's say, we hold these investments for a long period, right, it should converge to the mean itself. But even converging to the means, right, there is also a range. Like, say, for example, we talk about this 60 40 portfolios. Uh, the average return, the actual like index returns, right? After factoring, let's say a zero point five percent all in cost is about five point five point nine percent. But um, the in the worst case, in the last I think thirty three years we're using like about thirty three years of data. The worst is like about three three point nine percent. But there's also optimistic that you can get seven point two 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 percent re re returns. So uh, this. You can pause this video or you can take a snapshot of this one based on, let's say, the things. It gives you a certain idea. Like the takeaway I always want to say is that returns are a range. Like it's not always kind kind of fixed. Okay? But which strategic portfolio should Karen choose? Okay? So how she should choose it, right? Uh, we have a two-layer process to pick the, uh, a suitable strategic portfolio, right? Strategic portfolios for those who are unaware is a portfolio, right, where you set it and you forget it. Okay, meaning to say, um, there are some some people that have a certain tactical philosophy. Tactical means that uh, you believe in 
at a certain juncture, you should change part of your portfolio. You should increase the equity allocation, bond allocation. You should overweight China or certain regions or Japan, depending on certain kind of uh, uh, um, uh, opinions, opinions or 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 you can have a certain rules based things. So we call that a more tactical port portfolio or strategic portfolio with a tactical kind of like layers to it. When we say it's a strategic portfolio, we don't expect, let's say, the allocation to, 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 to change. Or rather, if let's say we're talking about, let's say, this allocation, we're not expecting this allocation to change. That's, that's, that, that's what we mean by strategic portfolios. Okay. So um, we have this, uh, I think I consider this like a two, 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 two layer evaluation. The first one is actually the ability to take risks. Uh. Ability to, to take risks is that whether you have enough resources, right, for you to actually be in um in an asset class such as equity that can be volatile, can at, at a certain point it can have an outcome that is not 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 what you expect. Okay? And a large part of the resources, right, uh not just about having in enough emergency fund is actually your time whether you have enough time uh to for 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 all this volatility to work itself out so if let's say you have a long time horizon you have a long period uh karen will fall fall into this camp like let's say 20 to 30 years you 20 to 30 years you can have a hundred percent uh equity strategic portfolios but if your time horizon is very short right like this is not a or rather, maybe Karen is like maybe 60 years old or 62 years old, very close to retirement already, right? And you have this magic number to hit, right? Then most likely you cannot take so much re equity risk if that's the target that you're actually looking for. So the more desirable or suitable uh, portfolio is 100% uh, very short-term bond portfolio. Somewhere in between, it will be a certain uh, equity and bond bond allocation over here. Now, after you go through this layer, right, you have a certain idea. Okay, which out of all these portfolios, right, out of these, let's say these six portfolios, right, which one is eliminated already? Is is a kind of elimination. Like which portfolios is actually left? Okay, then the second layer is your willingness to take risk. Uh, willingness to take risk can be confusing to some. It's confusing to me initially and it's basically your risk tolerance your risk uh, tolerance and capacity for volatility some people uh, due to their understanding or lack of understanding about these things they cannot take so much volatility they, after a, a little bit of volatility let's say five or ten percent they jittery already yeah so the very risk averse right most likely they we can only put them in more bond heavy portfolios for the more risk seeking ones right like like they are really okay with this kind of thing you can put in the 100 percent equity portfolio after uh with with what you have over here uh as you put it through this layer right you should have an idea that what are some of the portfolios that is available and that's your final recommendation so why should we why should karen respect her ability to take risks okay this is a, I hear a, a table about fire rolling returns. This is a 100% equity portfolios uh, with 53 years of data. So you can see it's a range of returns from minus 5.7% to 30%, 30 uh, which means that it's five years, 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%. Damn crazy. But there is also a period where let's say for five years is minus 2.7 minus 2.7 minus 2.7 minus 2.7 minus 2.7 can be disappointing so if let's say your time horizon is like kind of short right this might happen okay and if this is the case then would you be actually happy about it so sometimes it's not that let's say your some people they they just treat treat these things like your ability to take like like your time horizon as like uh not important uh, but it is uh, because they might not have seen the data that in five years you can still lose money uh. and if that's the case then can you adjust your plan if let's say you can adjust your plan then fair enough uh, but but as planners right we have to be more structured we have to kind of like 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 and and 
assume it at a certain phase that you cannot adjust for this kind of thing. Okay? Why should Karen respect her a willingness to take risks? Because there is this kind of thing. Not everyone can take this kind of things. It's nice to see in graphs. Uh. It's like minus 22%, minus 56%, minus 14%. But as you live through that period, right, and for some people, they, they are quite attached to the news, it might not be a, such an easy experience and they will be kind of wobbly about it. Okay, so different people take uh, uh, um, behaviorally, they, they might not be able to take these kind of things. Okay, so for Karen's, let's say, for example, Karen's uh, time horizon, we know that Karen's time horizon is 35 years, so it's kind of a long period. If we put it through this layer, right, then all these portfolios are available. This 100% equity portfolio, 80% uh, equity, 20% bond, 60% equity, 40%, all these are available. Okay, good. Her time horizon is long. Okay, all these are, she can choose to invest into all this. Now let's go to the next layer. This is a willingness to take risk. Let's say we have a certain way of actually assessing uh, Karen's risk port capacity. In financial planning, we, 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 we will give a risk questionnaire to the best of our ability to actually try to sift out like, what's her risk capacity. La. And I think risk capacity in a certain way, you can have different opinions about it. I tend to think that it's kind of fixed. It's more like you trying to gravitate to uh, your true risk capacity, okay? your true willingness to take risk. Okay? Uh, at the start, you might think hey, your, your, you can take all these things quite well or that because you're unfamiliar, you tend to be more conservative. But over time, as you understand all these things, you will just go up and down, up and down until a certain point. So say for example, Karen's, uh, we take, say that Karen's risk capacity is like moderate. And if it's moderate, right, what this means is that certain high equity kind of portfolio is not really advisable which is why I like I kind of gray out or kind of bluish it out. So what's available is these four kind of portfolios over here. And if let's say we want to give her the best chance of actually getting gaining that returns, right, which is higher in equity allocation. Equity has a highest probability of actually giving you, uh, giving Karen a good returns, right, then we would want to actually put her in, in a higher equity portfolio, which is 60-40. So if you go through these two layers, you will come up to 60% equity, 40% bond allocation. So it will be something like this. This might be a good implementation. It's made out of this global aggregate bond. This is a bond ETF that is 40% hedged to USD. And this is a developed market's uh, Developed market ETF and the emerging market ETF. So you have a portfolio that is cover cover the the developed and emerging markets in equity and also across the spectrum of bonds that is available because that's that's the global ag aggregate bond which is which tracks the Bloomberg global aggregate bond index which is usually the default benchmark index that we measure uh, when it comes to bonds. Total expense ratio is like about six, zero point one six percent, kind of low, and in order to actually get invested, uh, probably the average cost will come up to about fifty. I call it five point five basis points, or zero point zero five five percent. Okay, so how much should Karen contribute during the accumulation? Okay, we go back to this chart. And we have this information already. She needs to accumulate three point two million. Uh, which will enable her to have this $7,500 in inflation adjusted income over here. So right now we're trying to find out over here. Okay, let's assume, right, Karen just came out from work, don't have really a very rich parents that can give her like 400000 at the onset. Don't have any starting capital. Okay, money will have to come from the surplus or savings from work, which is like uh, her, her income, Minus her, her, her after, after, after CPF income, minus the expenses, and that's the difference. Uh, that's the savings. Uh, okay? So, um, if this is an Excel, uh, okay, now we're trying to determine the annual contribution and all. 
if you go to Excel, right, there's this formula over here, this PMT formula. These are interchangeable. It's called a time value of money uh, formula. And you can see the, the thing over here. If you, type, if you put in inside the, the, uh, your, your spreadsheet, right, equals PMT, right, you should be able to see how, uh, what, what is it. And then you need to fit in three, these three things. Uh. The first thing, right, is the real returns. Uh. You have to have a certain assumption what is, let's say, the, the returns that, you, that we can use. Okay, so why do I use 5.5%? If let's say we go back to let's say the returns, right? If let's say these are the 20 year returns, right? We use this as a benchmark. If it's a 60, 40 portfolio, on average it's like about 5.9%. Of course, low is 3.9%. I think in terms of planning, we can use, I think 5.5% I think over here is kind of conservative. It doesn't cover everything, but it gives you a true north. The idea is actually to give you a true enough to actually go go towards. Okay. Mm, yeah. Okay. So the time horizon to actually accumulate is 40 years. Okay. Over here, uh, 40 years. That's, that's how long that, that, that she, she has. And we're, we're trying to get to $3.2 million. If you put this one inside, you use this formula, right? You're going to get this amount, $23,425. So if Karen contributes this amount or 1,952 per month, right? She can, a month, right? For 40 years, right? She can accumulate this amount of money. How much does Karen earn? I don't know, okay? This, so in a certain sense, right? If let's say your real return is actually higher, you need less contribution, which means that because of her moderate risk capacity or her willingness to take risk, right? She cannot ramp up to the highest one, uh, highest one, uh, and and so um, she 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 might need to actually contribute more. Okay, if her time horizon is actually shorter, right, the contribution needs to be higher. Time horizon, as in the time horizon to accumulate, instead of forty years, is less. Like some of you, you probably started late, right, and that is a challenge for you because. It is. This is the way. This is the way. 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 It is. Um, you have a short, shorter period, and then you have to actually like put in contribute more money to it. If Karen has more ca capital today, of course, it also changes, and all these things, right? They don't factor in any of the Karen's future income growth and additional contribution. So there is a lot of like opportunities and all and. If let's say this is kind of tough for 25 years old to, to build, build up, right? She don't have to put in all, okay? This is just an equal 23,000, 23,000 all the way is 23,000. In the future, right, when she earns more, right? Maybe let's say 80,000 or 100,000 or even 120,000, right? She could put in more, let's say 40,000. And that makes up for her low savings at the start. The equation changes, but but this gives you a good idea. Like, um, if let's say she has um, uh, twenty three thousand, that's that's how it works out. Okay. So next, now we figure out that if she contributes one thousand nine nine hundred and fifty two dollars, right? Uh, she can reach this FI goal of hers. Okay. Next, we talk about how do we implement this plan. It goes back to the portfolio part. Okay, so the first, this is a high level kind of idea. Right? Decide to go, decide to go either the D, D, DIY ETF route, which means that you hire, you find your own broker and then you try to implement this yourself, or you can go for one of the sensible strategic portfolio provided by Auto Wealth, Money Hour, and then now us. More or less, we seen. I have seen. Let's say there are portfolios. Before the strategic portfolios, they kind of look more more sound for the flagship ones or the core ones. Not all the strange satellite ones are. Don't don't be confused. Ah, we're talking about core strategic portfolios, right? They can give you, in a certain sense, uh, it allows you to actually like that true north. Like if you if you're not so much into this one, that's a good starting place to actually put in. And even if let's say you manage to accumulate more of it, right? It still sound sound 
sound sound sound enough okay you have to sign up for an account after you make a decision and then you fund the account and then you make your first investment through this platform okay like quite straightforward lah. if you those those of you who have users uh you uh this you should not find this difficult for those that is new to this you might need uh to some some handles over here or sign up to give it a try and all okay so some notes that i have with, with regards to the implementation remember that i say for karen right this might be a good portfolios and all three funds but with her capital of let's say $1,952, right? Uh, Karen might not be able to implement this well. Now, the good thing out there is that there is a few like ETFs and all, and there might be a more cost simpler implementation of this. So, what I show over here is it, it gives the same uh, kind of it gives the same uh, uh, it tracks the same it allows you to express your investment philosophy the same way over here but only using two funds so the difference over here is this vanguard FTSE or or will use its etf this the ticker symbol is vwra this one kind of like it's quite popular out there and this one covers both the developed markets and the emerging markets and i think if it's if I remember correctly, it covers even more like the smaller caps and all. Uh, don't hold me to this. Like I'm a 43 year old. I forget some of these things. Okay. Or I see so many of these funds, right? I might get confused over here. There, there is a part that I'm not sure whether whether I'm telling the, the correct thing or not. But this, having this portfolio, it the returns is going to be... If you track this one for a while, right, the returns is going to be somewhat different, but it's going to be quite close together. So, so it express the kind of investment philosophy that you can identify with that probably I, I talk about. Okay, so she can actually uh, implement this. Okay, so this is this is an an idea, and if she this is the portfolio. Uh, information over here and we talk about her monthly con contribution of Singapore dollars one one thousand nine hundred and fifty two based on the exchange rate over here right the USD equivalent is like about one thousand four hundred and sixty eight dollars and based on this allocation itself you can imagine the monthly contribution in order to buy these two funds is this amount this is the minimum commissions and if we take a minimum commit this one right divided by this one we get this like what's the minimum uh, commission percentage and it's 0 0.22 uh, percent 0.33 percent nowhere close to this 0.055 percent that i talk about so basically uh if you invest monthly right i think it's 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 the kind of commission that we when we started off this in 2004, 2005, right? This is the kind of commission. We're seeing 0.5% commission. So so this one is kind of low and, and all. But if you're trying to get better, right? Then maybe the idea is you don't invest every month, okay? And um, in the grand scheme of things, if you look at Karen, right? She has 40 years. 40 years. Every year of these 40 years, right, it's like a dollar cost at, at, at average. Some people, they, they, it's better to, to have an RSP program to actually invest uh, automatically every month so that you, uh, you don't have the behavioral tendency to actually like, the, 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 the more that touch points that you have to, to, to decide whether to invest or not to invest, the more problematic it is. The behavioral part is a problem. But you don't have to actually like put in every month, right? Every two months is also okay. So over here, I show you the table. If let's say Karen decides to, okay, let's invest uh, every two months, right? You can see the commissions rate is actually lower. Not as low as this one, but actually it's, it's lower, okay? 
instead of do, actually doing this, you could also like one one month you just buy uh, uh, one ETF, then the other month you can also buy one ETF. The idea is that you are always having an eye that you you're trying to get this kind of portfolio forty percent bonds, sixty percent equity. This one is more DIY micromanage, and so you. You can see the benefits if, let's say, you go with uh, one of those kind of robo platforms that have these kind of strategic portfolios. That they have a RSP program, which is called a, a regular savings plan program, where they automatically they will gyro or deduct. Uh, they, they gyro or they will take the money from your savings account and then you they 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 will just invest it. It there is a certain uh behavioral uh advantage over there okay so what happens next okay like this is what happens next uh. you're supposed to live your life lah. because you were recurring karen will actually recurring actually put in the money okay 1952 per month or that in a total i think is that amount oh, i forgot already see poor memory okay what's the amount uh ah, 23,000 a year so imagine that every year she'll put in 23,000, 23,000. But there are some things to do at the same time. If let's say you want to pursue, let's say your financial independence or re retirement. Okay. You can take this time to actually understand the kind of lifestyle you desire better. Because at 25 years old, you think that at a, a 65 year old, you enjoy this kind of thing or your this is the kind of lifestyle that you want. That might not be the case because you might have less experience over this. Over time, you might understand these things better. You probably need to understand the kind of like uh, idea behind uh, financial independence. There's a whole literature on this one. Your idea about about like what you like, what what you feel about FI, might change after a while. And some of you like my. My colleague Seth, Seth uh, from Sat Satisfy, she, he, he was quite open about it that this was kind of a thing that features in his mind, in his plans. But, but now there's a certain shift that uh, that might not be super important anymore because what is actually more important is kind of like a, a lifestyle that balance work as well as his desire to actually like work in experience other places other culture so when that when when he realized that that can happen right then it shifts then a lot of us we realize that hey actually like um, we really sometimes we wanted to pursue this thing because we hate our job and and that might not be the right way to actually look at it because that job we hate right once we we find a a more better domain in, we, that suits us better, our outlook kind of change. Okay, so that's some, some example. Find out how big the goal of FI is in your list of priorities as well as, as you want. As much as you want to pursue this, next time when you when a lot of things come comes along, you realize that hey, I yearn for those things back more. Okay. And that changes your contribution to it. And how big of a thing you want money to be in your life? This one is kind of important because some you might choose instead of let's say this this kind of like passive portfolio approach, you might want to be more hands on about it. And if that changes right, then some of like like some of these ideas would also shift shift accordingly. Okay. Karen will contribute, continue to contribute to the portfolio. This is important. Uh, in order to have that 3.2 million, have to con continue to con contribute. Okay. I think it's also important to actually read more about uh, what is needed to learn specifically for low-cost, globally diversified portfolio. If you understand better, your conviction is higher. You will dare to contribute even more capital. If not, you will not do it. I think some like watching one video of mine and then having this idea or 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 people tell you to actually put your money in VWRA is good. But you will along the way you will definitely face some challenges, challenge to your conviction, right? Like why is this why is this uh, a good idea? Like like am I making a mistake or not? So while the 
plan is simple, the implementation is simple, everything is 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 sounds good, right? The hard part is actually staying invested. And what's your reason for staying invested? So so simple things right uh you need to understand the background of, of, of this thing. So some of some people they they are quite they became highly convicted about it because they really take pains to actually like spend some time on a recurring basis. Don't have to be every day, lah. Don't have to be be every week, lah. Just diligently be very focused on it. Okay. So remember that. Uh, this is taken up from I think my first uh first first video. Remember that uh what you own, right? In the portfolio, different allocations, right? It's a volatile savings account with a constrained time horizon with less than certain returns. So, this is this is the picture, uh, Like Karen will be for for this one will be for her forty years old. But the idea is like it's a savings account, right? You go up and down, up and down, up up and down. Um, how much you have, right? Would depend on the returns, and the returns can be un uncertain uncertain over here. There's some parts of this one that we're gonna tackle in, 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 in some of the, uh, the next section, okay. And I think sometimes it's good to actually track progress. I went through this one in my first video that you can you can see your expenses. Don't have to do it every month. Like have have a good idea about it, but you can also track your your income. So say for example. Uh, if let's say Karen have managed to accumulate let's say forty thousand dollars, she can take forty thousand dollars times two point eight percent. That's taken from the safe withdrawal rate table, right? And it gives you an idea that if let's say, um, um, that forty thousand times two point eight eight percent, that that is a a kind of like annual passive income, right? That will last for that thirty five years of for. For forty years period, right, and definitely that amount is gonna be like quite low, lah. But the idea is that we're trying to see if if she does all these things well, right. Eventually, at a certain point, it will cross over. It's just a kind of a matter of time. But of course, if you keep spending up and up and and this one, it will be quite difficult to 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 catch catch up. Okay, so after some time, what will happen? Okay. Uh, your plan does not stay static there because your life changes. Okay, so these are some of the things that will happen. So, say for example, um, I'll I'll try to take through take you guys through this through some uh visual example. So, you understand the desired uh lifestyle better. This changes your income requirement. So if let's say uh, yeah, I have a lot of stuff over here. So we have this diagram. Okay, so let's say this is uh Karen's plan or Renee. Okay. If let's say her her desired lifestyle is different, can be more, can be less, right? These things right changes. Okay, these things changes. This amount also changes. If and a, and and a good one is that if she gets married and she feels that it's like get gets married and she feels like uh if she wants more money uh a, a more uh more how how should I say it? expensive kind of not say gui yeah gui in Chinese is expensive like a lot of more things right. This income is larger, and of course, this amount will be larger. It's and that means that we have to shift these things, uh, accordingly. Okay, so, uh, Karen can get married. Okay, and that changes the requirement. But it also means that you have another uh income stream to 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 of savings to actually accumulate, and probably. The your spouse will also have some say savings to actually add add on to it. So this changes this picture lah, and and all that. Okay, and also you can do 
well and worse in your career and this changes your contribution so while she might earn maybe at the start of this one is that she'll earn like maybe about 50,000 or or 55,000 a year and at a certain point if she managed to step up fast and earns let's say 120,000 a year some of these contribution changes over time but of course uh, we could also say that like at a certain point let's say there's a certain inheritance that comes into the picture and instead of, so some parts of these three 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 point two 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 million uh, uh, um, uh, three three some parts of this three that that windfall right can fund that three point two million so all these things would adjust accordingly so so what so when all these things happen what do you roughly do some these whole things that i talk about right the whole the whole thing the whole thing let's say uh, uh all these things right from starting from this one right your let's say your desired uh desire lifestyle changes right you have to recalculate these things you have to like you have to recalculate this thing. This one will determine whether it's still three point two million or some something more, or or let's say uh, let's say let's say uh, you manage to accumulate faster. So let's say you have a one point seven mil already, and the question is whether if in the next five years can you retire or not. All these things you can make use of these equations, right? If you run through that this video again to adjust your plan accordingly, okay. So, um, for example, let's say you manage to accumulate one point seven million at at forty years old, right? Like, like, like. In that case, right, you will probably forty years old. You probably based on this one, right? If it's forty years old. Maybe you have to be more conservative. Instead of using two point eight percent, you probably need to use like closer to actually two point five percent. And does that figure right? Uh, like if it's a similar expenses, it's not seven thousand five hundred dollars anymore because that's just fifteen year, fifteen years away, right? The 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 income requirements is actually in nominal terms is actually lesser. So. So all these things you have to like recalculate again. The portfolios can stay the same. Portfolios can stay, 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 stay the same. And um, if let's say your risk profile actually changes, your risk capacity, you understand all these things better, and then uh, you you can move up to some of the more aggressive portfolios, and that might change. Which means that some of these allocations can can change to instead of 60 40 you can change to 80 80 20 and um, these things will be I, I iterate the, the the same way and if let's say you have figured out let's say it's 1.7 million you how how, how is the uh, income requirement like then you can work backwards uh, again right how uh, like how many more years to actually accumulate to 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 these things so um i hope this part helps okay so what one thing to note like 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 it's normal for these things to these things to change so so it's not like you find a financial planner they give you a plan and then it's like like that will always happen the returns will always be that 5.5 percent that we use uh you will definitely hit your goals 40 years from now no that's like 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 that's that's not the reality so some major takeaways okay uh you can create a scalable pa passive fi accumulation the accumulation the accumulation system with a low cost diversified equity portfolios and 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 all this uh, a large part of your plan depends on your desired lifestyle. You need to understand it better. See this whole thing, how to actually determine all these things. 
starts from your expenses. What is your income requirement? A lot of people they ask, can I, can I, be, am, how far am I from financial independence? They give out all their expense, all their assets, this and that, this and that, this and that, right? They just, they don't give like what is their income requirement or how, what is their, their spending pattern like? And, and how, how will we be able to de- determine all these things? Because I, you see my spending is like about 10,000 a year to all, do all, all the rest of people can, can they, can they uh, take this kind of uh, Keith's desired lifestyle? Probably not. So, so this is kind of important to actually make sense. And you can see a lot of part of the video is that you have maybe 40 years or 20 years, right? To actually um, get in touch with uh, yourself, understand all these things to actually understand like, what is it you're like? What is it that, that, these are the things that cannot you 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 cannot uh, not have, and what are some of these things that is variable, and and you have a higher chance of actually being closer to uh, FI realistically compared to people who don't do this kind of thing, and your life is constantly evolving, and these these numbers as 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 well, this is normal. Plans are not set set and forget okay so i think this is where i end this video and uh, hopefully this gives you an idea of like this is how roughly um, how financial planning is done especially for retirement planning and financial independence planning the difference for a lot of people is like what is the system that you use for 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 the uh, if we look at this one right this what is the system that you use to actually spend down your money it can be different and this amount that you need to accumulate is also different and we are making a, a strong assumptions that I'm not factoring let's say our government's pension system which is the CPF uh, life itself we're taking that that is not a consideration that that might not be a reality lah. so look at look upon my presentation today more like okay like you're trying to come up with a diy retirement income product this whole thing is a retirement income product you go to some of the banks and then they try to give you a very fancy name kind of endowment plan or retirement product they're trying to simulate this they're trying to help you accumulate and then they're trying to deaccumulate. and do they have all the features and of of, of of this plan over here probably uh probably not which next time i can talk more about if you if you wish to do put it in the comments uh in 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 this video and the way to actually look at this one is actually trying to look at this one as a as a like a retirement income product like that so if we add in those different different things your picture will look different but generally some of the figures like how to actually derive these figures it should be usable so instead of karen put your name inside there um, what is your kind of desired lifestyle all of those things how long you're you're looking for and what's what's your capital you can put in those 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 amount and then you can come up with something so hopefully this is helpful and 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 if you have any questions I'll probably do some uh, short write-ups or short videos to actually like uh, address uh, uh, address this. And if you like this video, do like and subscribe. Uh, send this one to more more of your friends to 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 see what they say. I mean, they might think that this is a st- stupid idea or, or or something. Always open to comments. Okay, with that, uh, do enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you in my next video.